To begin my challenge, I've been told to wait outside Gadget HQ to receive my instructions. Otis, your challenge is to take on and beat a professional road race cyclist on a hill climb course and become Gadget King of the Mountains. You have one week to choose your technology to help you win. Good luck. Well, I'm no king in the mountains, but it doesn't say I have to choose a bike. So first I wondered whether one of the personal transport gadgets I'd already tried on the show could do the job. OK, well, the hovercraft would definitely turn a few heads, but it's not really meant for mountains. I love the Anycycle, but a steep gradient, and I'd be eating tarmac. Now, that jet bike that Jason tried would certainly be fast enough, but there'd be a fair chance I'd end up off the road. <laughs> hmm, fire-breathing robot dog? Maybe not. Professional cyclists are capable of cycling uphill at speeds of 14 miles an hour, so to stand a chance of winning, I needed to combine my human power with some electric power. And after a few calls, I found just the thing. It was a bike, after all, but with a sneaky difference. Electric bike specialist Cytronix agreed to put together a special new electric road racer just for me. They'd added their electric power assistance to a top-of-the-range carbon fiber Cannondale Super 6. And at just 12.9 kilos, I reckoned it was the world's lightest electric road bike. The Cytronix system is designed to provide ultra lightweight and discreet assistance to cycling. This water bottle here is in fact a two kilogram battery that powers a motor on the front wheel. It can give you 180 watts of extra power when you need it. So for instance, if I'm cycling into a headwind or up an incline like this one, I just press the boost button and it really does make all the difference. The assistance can be used up to the legal limit of 15 miles per hour and I was definitely going to need the help as up ahead lay my hill climb challenge. We'd had the road specially closed on one of the most gruelling climbs on the UK cycling circuit, Holm Moss in Derbyshire. With gradients up to 15% over its tortuous two-mile ascent, it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. And if that weren't enough, I'd have to race against pro cyclist Russell Fonzie Downing. He's a sprint specialist, a former British road race champion, and he recently won the 2009 Tour of Ireland. Russell, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good to meet you. This stretch that we're about to do, that I'm going to, you know, whoop you on, have you ever done anything like this before? I've never been whooped on this, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's quite a tough hill and most of the big tours come over here. So for someone like me who normally rides on flats and at a really leisurely pace, how tough is it going to be? It's going to be hard <laughs> and you're going to struggle. <laughs> To see just how tough, I took off my electric assistant and first tried a short race man-to-man. -man. OK. Yeah! I'm keeping up with the boy here. It's all good. Is that all you got for us, eh? Come on then! Let's turn it! Hey! Me against the pro! No! I was getting excited, but it turned out Russell was just toying with me. <laughs> Weighing in at just 65 kilos on an ultralight bike, Russell's power to weight ratio is awesome. I'm no slouch, but I was left floundering. He's gone! Completely torn me in two! I'll see you in five minutes! So, on my own, I clearly wouldn't stand a chance, but after some time to recover, and of course with my extra electric power, would I have enough to match the pro over the full two-mile ascent? It was time to find out. Three, two, one, go! We both blasted off the line and almost immediately the incline began, which meant I could turn on my little friend, the boost button. Me and my electric bike had started impressively, and with a range of 20 miles, I wasn't going to run out of juice. I just had to keep pedalling. Legs are really starting to burn now. Not easy. No, it isn't, and I'm being assisted. The severe gradient really was an extreme test for the Cytronix system, and I'd been advised to keep my speed above 10 miles an hour to get maximum benefit from it. 
Pros like Russell are capable of outputting four times the power of an average cyclist, so I couldn't afford to let my speed drop. And approaching halfway, incredibly, I was staying up with Russell. Been maintaining an average of around 11 miles per hour, which for me is unheard of. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever hoped to be even this close to a pro. I mean, he's working infinitely harder than I am, but the Cytronex is eating up a lot of that advantage. But then we hit the killer final section, and Russell made his move. My legs just weren't up to the challenge. Trying my hardest now to give Russell a race, but I just haven't got anything left. Ugh. Oh, that hurt. Big incline. Keeping up that speed just got tougher and tougher. Heading into the final corner, I gave it one last push, but it was too late. Oh, man. Victory to the boy. Oh, oh. oh nearly. At the midpoint, oh, yes. you were right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it really did become an endurance race. But you did endure, because right at the end, you were only metres away from him, dude. Thanks very much. Well, I've got to say, though, Russell Downing, what a talent. Oh, yeah. Bags of energy. Yeah, completely. But you know what that means, don't you? Because he beat you, because John lost, and because I lost, we are 3-0 <laughs> down to the professionals. <laughs> yeah. So it's down to you to save Gadget ah. Face later on in the show. But before we have a look at that...